All right, it's time for some fringe. Fringe is the last thing that you do before you take your whole entire weaving off the loom because I think it's easiest to put fringe on when you have some tension on your warp strings still. So what we're gonna do is however long you want your fringe to be on your weaving. It can be as long as you want, guys. It can be as short as you want. But whatever length you want, you want to go that times two. So I want mine to be, I don't know, it's about six inches. Okay, that's more than six inches, maybe eight inches long. So I made sure I cut a bunch of string that is 16 inches long. So you wanna do double whatever you're doing. I also recommend using the assembly line method. I went ahead and cut all the string that I'm gonna use for my fringe so I can just be like a fringe making machine. I'll show you just with one so that you can see it more clearly. I like to go ahead and take the two ends like this and then I like to make a little loop and then I use my needle to help pull that loop through just a little bit and then now that I have a loop-de-loop -loop here I'm going to pull both tails through the loop-de-loop -loop and then pull tight like that so then my loops are all going down and I'm going right next to my plain weave. Now, if you don't have enough room on your plain weave, something you can do is you can just gently push this up like this. Now, something else you can do is you can also do two at a time. So if you want something to have uh, a little bit more impact, if you wanna mix some yarn colors, you can do that. Just again, pull that warp string up that you're going under and pull your yarn loops through and then pull make sure when you're doing more than one string you are very careful in pulling like right now i have four tails i'm pulling all four tails through and pulling the knot tight and kind of just guiding the yarn down so i'm going to go ahead and go across and do all my 22 strings with fringe something that's helpful when you're working on the fringe when you're done with a row kind of push it off to the side so you know which string to go on next and let's do a little tv magic boom look at that fringe all those beautiful cool colors now you know what? I don't like how thin my fringe is. I wish I could put more, but I don't want to go back and redo everything. So something you can do is make a second row of fringe. Just move down all your knots. Move up your plain weave so you have a little bit more room. And then just repeat the same process that you did on top of these knots. For me personally, I'm going to be using a little bit of shorter string so that I sort of have a by or two layer look to what I'm doing. So the process is exactly the same. I'm gonna take my string, I'm gonna make my little loop-de-loop -loop, like so. I'm gonna use my needle to help me pull up the string and pull through the loops and then pull the tails through and then pull them down. Woo, I love that contrast. All right, let's do a little TV magic again, shall we? <laughs> Ooh, it's electric. So another thing that you can do with your fringe when you're all done with it is a lot of you guys didn't like that we made you do a plain weave. Now I hope you can see that it's just a really good thing for your, your fringe to go against so that it's really strong. So if you don't like that plain weave as part of your design, go ahead and scrunch it down so that it is less noticeable in your whole design, okay? The last thing that you can do for the fringe is you can give it a haircut. So I kind of wish that my blue, green, and purple were showing through a little bit more and they're not really showing through. So I'm going to separate the two colors quickly. <sighs> And I'm going to twist these back around my loom. Another reason why it's really good to do your fringe on the loom is because everything is still nice and attached. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use just some simple scissors and I'm just gonna kind of eyeball where I want my fringe to end. And I am doing a sort of triangular design.
didn't go to school to be a hair cutter, so don't judge my asymmetry. Oops, and then kind of flip my fringe back. Oh, I like that. But now I want to cut my other fringe so that it is in a V formation too. So if you are struggling uh, to cut your fringe, first step of advice, make sure you're using the sharpest scissors that are at your table. And then my second piece of advice, and this comes from a story Mrs. Cantrell told me about um, bangs being cut in her family, is take some masking tape and put the masking tape on top of all the fringe where you would like it cut. So I want it to be in this angle. And then you can just use that masking tape as a guide for cutting your fringe, especially for those of you that want like a super exact cut. And then take your tape off and boom! What? Look at this amazing trick. Well, just watch it again because it's so amazing. Ah! Oh my goodness. And then of course, if with all these little teeny tiny pieces, please make sure that you guys clean those up. Boom. And I am officially done with fringe. Woo!